handle what you might think of as the politics of achievement. And you are being very significantly benefited in, in this process by what's going on in Pisces. Pisces is a crucial sign for you. It's the very next sign after yours. And so there is a close relationship between your sign and Pisces. For example, sign of the water bearer, Pisces is pretty much the ultimate sign of water, and so that's part of the relationship as well. Yes, and there that. are several planets in there. In my uh, main uh, sketched out chart for your sign, I've got three in there. One is Neptune, one is Pisces, and one is called Mora Sisi. And together, what these basically are all saying is that it is necessary for you to heal your matter, your self, self-respect, self-esteem, and Chiron is going to focus that. Part of the thing with Chiron is it can tend to focus on what needs to be evolved, developed, fixed, healed, and that kind of thing. And so with Chiron in the second, you may not be feeling like you're on top of the world, but it, it is worth knowing that the, uh, the challenges that you face in terms of self-acceptance and respect for your own creative process and for who you are more than anything but the creativity bit is an important asset because of Pisces in the second house that this takes focus and it it's not as simple as it seems and the most important thing you can do is refuse to deceive yourself by taking on the deceptions of others or by taking on the beliefs of others. So I would strongly suggest monitoring the discussion around you at all times and noticing the ways in which people talk themselves down, talk themselves out of things. And in a sense, put a lot of energy into convincing themselves of how worthless they are. And this is sad to say, but true enough self-esteem drama on the planet right now involves people taking up the role of the people who held them down and trying to convince themselves that they're not worth much of anything. And you are in very much the opposite process where there is tremendous focus on your self-worth and your self-value. But the key to this is to use the sense of loss or potential injury or the sense of mystery or maybe perhaps a little bit of invisibility to your own advantage and to recognize that merely by asking the question, merely by um, defining the issue and setting up a little workshop here, which is, you know, in astrology is the second house, and working with, working on the planets there, then you will build up, reconstruct, or establish perhaps for the first time your sense of how important your contribution is and why it is that you deserve to be on level ground. Level ground more than ground tipped in your favor or tipped against you. Now the ruler of of, uh, Pisces is Jupiter, the traditional ruler, and where you find that is in your sixth, your house of work. And so there's a suggestion here that there's a strong relationship between how you feel about yourself, what your basic level of self-esteem is, and whether you feel valued at work. Now, this is an old topic, right? And uh, sadly, there are a great many people who don't feel valued at work and who feel the loss of that without recognizing there's another side of the equation, which is to consciously choose to immerse yourself in situations where you are valued. And I will give you permission here, if you're not valued, to look where you might be valued. There's, yes, there's a high unemployment rate and a recession. At the same time, a lot of people have given up. It's not just that they've given up on finding work. A lot have given up on their ideals. A lot have given up on their willingness to really make an effort, their willingness to participate in a meaningful way, they even believe that a job can do that, and what I would suggest is this is a very good time for you to make some real decisions.
decisions about what you're doing and who you are doing it for. Oh. And to ensure that you actually feel good about that and that you are happy about going to work every day because you know that you are doing something that you're appreciated for and that in fact is an asset to the human race rather than oh. some kind of a detriment to the human race. Oh. So that is what I have to say to you here, basically, mm. which is to say, feel good about yourself because you are, oh. though, mm. although in a process of profound inner questing and mm. inner searching that may seem to be tremendously oh. distracting and calling for and consuming a lot of your mm. energy, that energy can feed mm -hmm. into your sense of belonging. Mm. And I think the most important mm. thing that it can do is to guide you making decisions for yourself that you know benefit you, and then as a side check, to understand the ways in which that benefit ripples out. Because really, what is good for you should be good for everyone around you. And if you perceive a question or an issue about that, it would be very wise to work that issue out and see how there could possibly be a conflict between what is good for you and what is good for anyone else. But the shortcut around this is, try to consider the equation in terms of only how you benefit from the choices that you make and then assess the impact they have on people around you. You're a lot more free than you think. And since so much of this astrology is about self-questing and that freeing up little pockets of energy that give you the power and freedom to make some real choices and to take action on them, that is a good setup overall. Mm. And I, I get this is not an easy time in your life, but it is, in hindsight, mm. you're likely to see it as being one of the most meaningful mm. and curiously mm. one of the ones where you got the most done, mm. where you achieved more than you even dreamed possible. And it might be a very wise thing to do to look back over your shoulder and mm. take account of what you have achieved the past few years you will find that to be an inspiring list of things to contemplate. If you are Aquarius Sun, please do go over and check your rising sign. My readings are designed to work in tandem, sun sign and rising sign. If you're a strong moon type, read your moon sign. And I do think that these readings are applicable and can be rather helpful for understanding the situation of the people that you care about by reading their sign and their rising sign. But really, this whole uh, program going on is about mm. you. You are in this unusual phase of making peace with yourself, and I think that you're going to come mm. through this feeling good in your skin and being someone who understands uh, why you're on the planet and your relationship mm. to the whole past, mm. and as a consequence, your relationship to the present moment and to the future. Thanks for listening, and I'll catch you over at a different sign. Bye for now. Oh. 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 Now trust in her, you must endure the seasons ever changing. Face the frost, the holocaust of life's been Because there's work to do. Making a film, for goodness sakes. I thought I'd offer you an alternative queen speech. You see, I, I'm dressed for my pyjamas, my tracksuit bottom. Not that they're tracksuit bottoms. But my baggy pants and my sweatshirt. Into my outfit. That I wore tonight. Fuck it, gig. Bird's Nest Christmas party. 
both items found by French Fred on Deptford High Street. People have thrown them away. He found them. I wear them. Not bad, huh? People like people to look good. Well, we're in this state of society where image seems to be everything. Everything indeed. And play your song. I am just wondering what the Queen's going to be mentioning in her speech this year. She hasn't got the Olympics to um, come back on. Well, that community spirit. I wonder if she's going to be paying a fault to all of our homeless people, cold people, hungry people. In this country, Island, the camera van, here in SE8, long term, raw dockyards, fuck it, I'm going to see if I can play this song, it's all about learning and having fun. until Kim introduced it to me. It's a great song though. Let's go get stoned. Ooh, let's go get stoned. I'm surrounded by drugs, you know. I keep saying I'm going to give them up. And I realised, well, I'm just using ketamine. It's 
be an antidepressant for me. I could go to the doctor and get something on prescription and that would probably numb my mind. But instead I choose to um, pay my dealer a small amount. Well, actually quite a large amount. The rate the money's going up. Um, and, well, expand my mind in the process of not getting too sad. Like, all that is below there, you know, I am what Marcus as well, you can see by the dress, darling, even had some cocaine today, lucky me, but anyway, that Queen's speech, uh, England, UK, world, end of 2013, beginning of 2014, we are in a state of crisis, and the media may like to tell us that we are the best, and we are the almighty. But what the fuck is going on? People are cutting, are losing, falling, suffering. It's all change. Why don't we just do it fucking politely and creatively and cleverly? Got to take these boots off. I think they're white. We do our neighbor's alarms going off there. Hopefully everything's all right. I think it's just one of those pointless alarms that doesn't actually really signify anything. Let's see. ER, my ass. Yeah. Got that one done. There's old nun. She spits fire when she works, but I'm not too sure. Let's see. She had some fun in America. Earlier this year, she should get some fire going. Go on, spit fire, nun, spit fire. Spit fire, she's a bit exhausted as well, but even my wind up fire spitting nun is exhausted. And he's had some horoscopes from Eric Francis. Dynamic year. All commencing with a new moon and lots of alignments. And here's a little bit of my birth chart. Let's wait for none to be quiet. Go on. Shh. Are you not worn out yet, Nun? I can't believe she stopped spitting fire. Ah. What did she say? Is that a revolution, man? Seems to be a revolution. The alarm's still going off. I might have to go and um, check that out. Anyway, yeah, one of my great grandparents. Three greats, grandparents. I think this is my dad's mum's dad's dad. Something along those lines. William Herring or Earring. He was born in 1798 and he died in 1892. He was almost 100 years old, and not only was he almost 100 years old when he died, but he was also an inmate at the District Camberwell Workhouse, occupation joiner. It's quite a fascinating bit of information, this. He lived a very long life, and he worked very hard. He had a wife and four children. And they seem to depart along the way. There's the wife on four. And then he's with three sons. So I guess the wife must have died. And then two sons. And then one son. And then one son. And then just him. Married Christmas Eve, 24th of December, 1827. Which I think is about 186 years ago. Anyway. I do wonder what the Queen's going to put in her speech this year. Happy, happy. Happy, happy. Horsey, horsey. Mm. Or, mm. Mm. I'm where I'm not meant to be, but I am here. And I'm here. So, um, causing no harm. Having some fun. Fuck it. Thank you very much. Here's to the Queen's speech. Here's to the new year. Here's Eileen the cameraman.
Wow. That's another revolution. They say you want a revolution. Of course I've forgotten everything. Oh, I posted them. I will do some follow-ups. Because um, I've not had any, any response yet. Still no response. There's been some great projects going on. Come on, people. We can set such a beautifully wonderful, creative, and intelligent example. If only we wish to. I know, yes, I'll straighten up. I will straighten up. For you guys, I will straighten up. And I'll be all clean and pretty and nice. Yes, I know. Yes. Uh, give me a reason to not get depressed. That's a good start. <laughs>